You know, normally I don't allow visitors in my dressing room. Oh, I am so grateful to you for the opportunity. There's nothing of it. So you're really going to let me help you with your act? I can't think of anyone I'd rather have. Now, let us toast to the assistance you'll provide me. So, uh, uh, what is it I'm going to have to do? All in due time, my dear. All in due time. For now, let us enjoy the few precious moments remaining. How many times do I have to tell you not to bother me before performance? They want us to go on early. The amazing Goldfarb called in sick. Get out of here and stay out of here. I'll meet you on stage. Yes, sir. Extraordinary show. I, Patin the Magnificent, will perform the impossible. The death defying cabinet of doom. See here nine stainless steel blades, all positioned to plunge into the cabinet. I have offered fifty thousand dollars to anyone who can perform the cabinet of doom trick successfully and live. But before you all rush up, let me add that two men have died in this cabinet trying. Human flesh and muscle are to these blades what butter is to a hot blade. And now, a graphic demonstration of what happened to those who attempted the cabinet of doom and failed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my turn. Ah! Oh. Silence, please.
you doing it? Back it up. No, don't touch that. No, no, no! That's terrible. What is it? Fatim the Magnificent. Who? The what? Fatim the Magnificent. He was one of the great magicians of the world. It seems that he died in an accident nearly three months ago. Oh, a friend of yours? No, not really. It's just that uh, those of us who are interested in magic were floored by his sudden rise to prominence. He does one of the greatest illusions of all time. Very few magicians have even tried. Yeah, what was it? The Cabinet of Doom. Hmm. Sounds like a laugh a minute. He used to strap himself into a coffin, and then a dozen steel spikes were driven right into it. Please, I'm trying to eat. Oh, no, there's never a mark on him. He got out without even a scratch. To this day, nobody knows how he even did it. A couple of other magicians tried to duplicate it, but they didn't even live long enough to find out what happened. Yeah, being a magician's a dangerous job. I mean, it's not on my list of career possibilities. Don't you joke about it, Ryan. Look, some of those tricks are very dangerous. I used to do one that was called the Pendulum of Death. Now, that really required impeccable timing, dexterity, and skill. You were much uh, younger then. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Oh, uh, whatever happened to Fatim? Well, he was putting the cabinet away, and the armature with all the spikes slipped. <laughs> I'm glad you find that amusing. You no, know, it's just that um, Fatim the Magnificent's real name was Harvey Ringwald of the Bronx. That name sounds awfully familiar. Yes, it does. The manifest. I got it here. Yeah? Here it is. Item number 37492, sold to Harvey Ringwald, the Houdin box. He had the Houdin box. Damn box, Houdin box, which one is it? It once belonged to that legendary uh, magician from France, uh, Houdin. He died trying to perfect it. And you think they're connected? Maybe, who knows? We better get back this Houdin box before anybody else dies. It says here that Fatim had an assistant, Robert Simpson, who now works for a magic supply house making properties. Why don't you guys see what you can learn from him? I'm going to talk to some friends of mine at the Temple of Magic. Fatim used to hang out there. Maybe they can tell me something about him. Meet you there later. <laughs> Sorry, I really don't know what happened to us things. Seen them since the accident, nor do I care to. What about a Houdin box? That ring a bell? Nope. Our records show that Fatim bought this box about two years ago. So? Look, it's really important that we get it back. Why? For sentimental reasons. It belonged to our uncle. We're willing to pay good money for it. Well, I've gone to the wrong person. I knew nothing about his equipment. But you worked with him, didn't you? Nobody worked with Fatim. You worked for him. You did as he told you to. That's all. I was his flunky, if that's what you mean. So you didn't know how his tricks worked? Magicians guard their secrets with their lives. Well, that's obviously what Fatim did. And his secrets died with him. And good riddance. So you have no idea where things are now? Listen, last I heard, they were all auctioned off. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really don't have time to participate in your scavenger hunt. And as far as I'm concerned, I should have been the headliner and Fatim the flunky. Hello. Yeah, it's me. Two collectors just paid me a visit. They were looking for the box. Did you tell them anything? No. No, I didn't tell them anything. Could there be trouble? Well, if they get in the way, we'll just have to lose them. It's as simple as that. OK, handle it. OK. Very good boy. 
funny? Well, <laughs> Jack, how are you? Good to see you. You're looking good, man. Hey, you're not so bad for an older man. Sit down. Well, what did you want to see me about? Hey, this is some bash you're putting on television and everything. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the biggest. 100,000 bucks first prize and admission to the Magic Star Society. Magicians from all over coming out of the woodwork to try out. A chance to get into the inner sanctum. <laughs> Mr. Martin, this is for you. Tommy, I thought I told you this was a closed set. Well, they were looking for a runner, so I took the job. I've got to go. <laughs> so, uh, what can I do for you? Your new Fatim the Magnificent. You mean a Harvey Ringwald the sleaze bag? Yeah, what about it? What happened to him? Well, as far as I know, he had an accident. Why? Well, he had a piece of equipment that I wouldn't mind acquiring. Oh, I'm afraid you're a little late for that. His stuff has been dispersed already. You're not thinking of doing the Cabinet of Doom trick, are you? Only a certified lunatic like that Tommy would try that one. Kids. Jack. Oh, uh, these are my business partners. Oh, glad to meet you. Well, if that's all there is, I'm afraid I have to go. Uh, I wish I could invite you to stay. This is strictly a closed set. You know how temperamental magicians are. Uh, look, why don't you come back tomorrow night for the show? Be my guest. Let you in for half price. <laughs> oh, just kidding. It's on the house. Excuse me. Thanks. We just might. What were you guys able to find out? Well, Fatim and his assistant weren't exactly drinking buddies. Now, do not invite to the same party. You will do as I say. Please, Father. And no more back talk. Who's running this show? You or me? Ever since your mother died, you've been nothing but a problem. Wow, that poor girl. Father seems to take his act a little too seriously. I think they really want us out of here. Come on, let's go. Excuse me. I'm afraid this place is off limits to all except magicians. But of course, I am the great Montero, and I have come to grace your contest. I've never heard of you. You will. What's your specialty? A death-defying act that will stagger the imagination. I call it the Coffin of Blood. <laughs> Whoever has the U-Damn box has the power to be the best magician in the world. It's my guess they're going to try and prove it in Monty's competition. <laughs> Marvelous. So all we have to do is figure out of a hundred magicians which one just might possibly have it. Well, it's not hopeless. The manifest said the box is pretty big. That eliminates quite a few acts, right? Most of them, I would think. Don't forget, we're looking for something spectacular and death-defying. Or someone who would be willing to use a cursed object. Someone like Montaro. Did you see the way he treated his daughter? It was awful. Now, this is all under the assumption that we're able to get back into the Temple of Magic and long enough to have a look around, which we can't. Right? Uh, don't be too sure. You heard it yourself. The guy said the place is closed. Except to magicians and their assistants. burning rope escape trick. You mean the pendulum of death? Yeah, it's like riding a bicycle. You never forget. <laughs> it's the old pendulum of death, Monty. The pendulum of death? No way. Oh, come on. No. Now, Monty, look. No. You and I, we've forgotten more than these young people have ever known. No. Yeah, please. Now, old time's sake. Oh, all right, all right. But you'll have to audition like anyone else. Well, of course. I'll try and squeeze you in late this afternoon. Only the top five acts get into the televised finals tonight. Yeah, understood. Come on, come on, Miranda. I'll be down to take a look at your act in five minutes. Get it together. You guys can go on after the prodigious Panzini. Good, good luck. Yeah, thank you, Monty. A lot to do, and we haven't much time to do it, so come on, let's get going. Well, I've got to unload all your gear. Why don't I check out the prop room while I'm down there? That's a good idea.
Ready, set, go. How long did he say it takes for that rope to burn through? Oh, lots of time. Almost a minute. Took you 85 seconds. Well, it's faster upside down. I'm a little rusty. Found something. In the prop room. The Houdin box. I don't know. It looks like that trick Fatim did. It's got the holes in it with the big knives. But, get this, it belongs to Montero. Then, if Montero is using the old cabinet of doom box, that means he has got his hands on some of Fatim's equipment that was up for auction. I better check that out. You two, keep an eye on uh, Montero and Lila. Hmm? Well, great. Maybe we'll get lucky. You won't have to do your trick after all. What? And miss the return of the great Mad Marshak? Come on, let's go. Scrounging on this place. How could you stop by a little blackmailer? Why would anyone want to blackmail us? Who knows? Jealousy, greed. There are a lot of sick, demented people out there, Lila. But what if you don't listen? Oh, stay out of this. This is my business, so let me handle it. This is my chance, Lila, and I will not be denied. Please, Father. Shut don't... up! Listen, no more talk about such nonsense. Tail and make sure he doesn't barge in on Jack. You want to keep an eye on Lila? Mickey. I'm Lila. appreciate this. Most people aren't so friendly. I know. Well, maybe when this is all over, we can get together. If my father lets me. He's very strict. Well, don't let him get you too down. I try not to. I really do love him. Well, you'll just have to come to the store. We'll have some fun. You don't do this all the time? This? Magic? Hell no. You're lucky. I've been on the road with my father since I was 16. Your, um, father does this trick. 
the coffin of blood? I guess so. I don't know too much about it. What about you? Why are you doing this? Well, to tell you the truth, we're looking to see if we can't win $100,000. I know what you mean. Oh, hello, Mr. Montero. What are you doing here? Uh, same thing you are, just checking our equipment. You're following me. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. You do not belong here. Mr. Montero, can I have your autograph? You can just make it out to Ryan. I was a big fan of Fontaine the Magnificent. Did you know? He had an act a lot like yours. No, I never did. It's too bad. He's quite a guy. You will leave that. No one is allowed to watch me prepare the coffin of blood. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, good luck at the contest. Sorry. Why didn't you say so? I was too scared. Besides, I didn't want Montero to know. Don't you think that's a little brave? I think it's a little stupid, but I'm here anyway, aren't I? Now, let's get on. Yeah, what have we learned? Well, for starters, Lila doesn't have a clue. In fact, she's terrified of him. Yeah, who wouldn't be? Montero? And that coffin of blood, that, that rig is really just that. There's no way out of that thing. There's got to be something else. Those blades would carve a turkey. Has to be the hooden box. I can't see it can be anything else. That would explain Montero's paranoia. Now, all we got to do is find that thing. After you've done your trick. Well, that first, come on. Check the gym. I'll check his dressing room. Jack. Jack. He wasn't in the jar, and I checked the prop room. He wasn't even in the wine store. Fine, I checked. His Get this show on the road. You're holding up everything. Okay, okay, okay. Come this way, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to witness is one of the most dangerous escapes ever attempted by a magician, the pendulum of death. As you have seen, the magnificent Marshak's hands have been completely immobilized by the straitjacket he is wearing. To further render him helpless, stainless steel chains have been wrapped around his body and tied to this belt by those two padlocks. Impossible as this feat may appear to be already, the magnificent Marshak has raised the stakes 
by attempting to free himself while suspended by his legs over this bed of spikes. There is one more little complication. The rope from which he is suspended shall be burning. He will have 60 seconds to extricate himself before the rope burns completely through, sending him plunging onto the bed of spikes. Magnificent Marshak, are you ready? Begin. Hoist him up. Chance to badly lock me in the closet. Chance, look at that for chance. He's broken. broken. That was filed. Are you saying this wasn't an accident? I'm saying somebody wanted me dead. Why? Why would they want you dead? Because we're getting too close. I wonder if they killed Jack, they get rid of all three of us. Exactly. Montero. Montero could have done this, but he's a little too obvious. Now, who else is there? Miranda, what about Miranda? She's been watching us like a hawk. Yes, I think it's time we paid her a little visit and had a chat. It's Robert. Robert? That team's assistant, but Miranda was Robert? Wait a minute, well, where's the suicide message? That does it. It may not even be suicide. It, it, somebody was trying to get rid of me and now Robert. Why? What's the connection? Well, why does there have to be a connection? Oh, there is a connection. Well, maybe it's just a random killer that this is his act. Oh, boy. Sorry. Wait a minute, what's this? It's like sawdust. What would sawdust be doing in his hair? Hey, Robert, check this. Oh, my God. Hey, hold it. Uh, uh, no, please. I don't know anything. It was all Bobby's idea. Just, just don't hurt me. It was Bobby's idea. N nothing. Ah! Shall we try that again? I didn't want any part of blackmailing Montero. Blackmailing Montero? Why would anyone want to blackmail Montero? Ryan, let me talk to him. Now, listen, you. Whoever did this to Bobby could easily do it to you. Bobby knew something, didn't he? Something about a box? How did you know? Just tell me. <laughs> All right. It was this box that Fatim used to do the Cabinet of Doom trick. Now, Robert tried to find out everything he could about it. The team wouldn't let him know the first thing. The team died. The box vanished. He was probably killed for the box. Montero. So you came here to search for it? Bobby said that if we found out who had the box, we could write our own ticket. So we came and we turned the place upside down. And Robert found it. Where? Where is it? He didn't tell me that. But what he did tell me was that he sent a note to Montero to arrange terms that we'd be the headliners in exchange for our silence. Well, he got Robert silenced, didn't he? And you'll be next unless you help us. Now, tell us about the box. How does it work? I don't know that, and I don't want to know. What I do know is that whenever Fatim performed the Cabinet of Doom trick, somebody had to be inside the box. Curse. What? 
nothing. Victims get locked in the Udam box. There's no illusion, there's no slate of hand. It's just cold blooded murder. The show goes on in half an hour. We've got to stop it. I can go and see Monty and try and get him to postpone it or at least stop that, that coughing up blood thing. Right, I'll go speak to Lyle. The boy thing probably has no idea what her father's up to. But if I can persuade her not to perform this evening, there's no way he can possibly right. go on. No, I'll go look for Montero. He's probably lining up another victim. Oh, you come with me and we'll take care of it. Lila, I've got to talk to you. Um, sure. Um, you look worried. Is your friend okay? No, he's fine. It's you I'm worried about. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Father and I are getting along pretty good now. Lila, I'm gonna ask you to trust me. I do. What are you getting at? If you didn't help your father do the coffin of blood trick this evening, what would happen? Are you kidding? Everything. He can't do it alone. Well, then that's what I'm going to ask you to do. What? This means the world to him. He's given his whole life to this. Lila, he's given more than his life. This is magic. Real magic. <sighs> Come on. There's no such thing as magic. That's what I used to believe. You're serious, aren't you? Dead serious. Look, Lila. There's something called the Udam box. I think your father has it. So that's what he's been so secretive about. You've seen it? kept it hidden. Where? Can I see it? Sure. I'll show you. Where is it? It's over here. talking about? Yeah, I think it is. Can you have a look? Oh, it's caked with blood. <laughs> Lila! What's that, Mickey? I can't understand a word you're saying. You thought my father was the great Montero. I'm the great Montero. All he can do is boss me around. But without me, he's nothing. I'm the one who made him what he is, not the other way around. He doesn't mean? even know what's going Lila, on. Please. And nobody, nobody is going to get in my way. Not the team, not Robert. Not even you. I was beginning to like you. I really want to thank you for helping me with the act. I would have had to find myself a victim anyway. But you've saved me the trouble. Lila, please! I'm sorry you won't be able to see us win. But you'll be there in spirit. Montaro's performance. Oh, come on, Jack. Don't look, I'm deadly serious. This is important. A little professional jealousy that you've had about that little trick of yours. You told me better than that. I thought I did. Now, please excuse me. No, no, don't you know what's going on? Can't you see? Look, all I can see is I've got a show to produce. Which somebody is trying to sabotage. What are you talking about? The murders. What murders? Tommy. Tommy? Tommy was a foolish kid. He died trying to do something he shouldn't have been doing. Monty, it should have been me landing on those spikes. Oh, what do you complain? Don't flatter yourself. Who'd want to kill you? What, and Robert? Robert? Need Miranda, the guy with the identity crisis, and a few screws loose in his belfry, he committed suicide, which isn't hard to understand. That's just what the killer wanted you to believe. Jack, I haven't time for all this. We're on the air now. Please excuse me. I can't get through to Monty. He's not going to stop the 
show. Montero's on next. Yes, I know, I know. Uh, have you seen Mickey yet? No, no. Wait a minute, if Mickey went to talk to Lila and Lila's here, where's Mickey? No mistakes now. This is our big chance. Hi, have you seen Mickey? Uh, not for a while. We have to go on. Lila has sawdust on her back. Didn't Robert have sawdust in his wig? Yeah, maybe they get it from that dummy they use in their coffin trick. No, no, they haven't even done the act yet. Besides, I saw sawdust around here somewhere else. What, in, in the prop room? No, no, in the wine cellar. When I was going down to look in the prop room, I saw sawdust in the wine cellar. What would Lila be doing in the wine cellar? Recently, too. Well, she has a costume. Mickey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed the fabulous Rossini. Judges, cast your ballots. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, the next contestant for your consideration, a newcomer, the great Montero. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the great Montero will perform his death-defying act of skill and courage, the famed and infamous Coffin of Blood. There are nine stainless steel blades, each one positioned to plunge through the lid and impale the magician within. Like the late Mateen the Magnificent. I have offered $50,000 to anyone who can successfully perform the Coffin of Blood. And by that I mean anyone who survives it. <laughs> Mickey! description of the impossibility of escaping the coffin of blood. This is the best I've ever seen. Well, there's gotta be a trigger or something. Come on. I don't know. I don't know. I see her. I see her. Mickey! Mickey! Come on! Get you out! Jack! And now, the great Montero will attempt the impossible. Jack, what are you doing? This crystal might be the lock. If I can just pry it out. No. Ryan, pass me the flashlight. Dim the light. Are you ready? The great Montero is ready. Isn't that weird? A girl like 
Lila could turn out to be such a psycho. Mm. Never judge a book by its cover. Or a man by the jacket that he's wearing. <laughs> yeah, but you never know, Jack. Mickey could turn out to be a real schizo. Mm. Mm, I'd have to be to work with you, wouldn't I? Have you got anything in a 40 regular? Oh, this is you, my boy. This is just you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, maybe we can find you pants and a ball and chain to match. <laughs> Mickey, mm -hmm. would you make this tighter, please? Oh, my pleasure. Hmm. You can handle it? Sure, I'm sure. This is going to be the easiest line up between silk sheets. That certainly ought to wrap it up. Good. Mickey, yeah. you got the stopwatch. Yeah, you yeah. want me to time you? I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Ready. Okay, whenever you are. Set. Go. Would you like another cup of coffee? I don't mind if I do. Here, let me put this right where you can see it. Oh, but it only runs up to an hour. Um. Uh, guys. Hey, guys, this isn't funny anymore. <laughs> 